Yes, for us, David Sutta. He joins us live from Manchester, New Hampshire, with a focus on the two candidates from Florida. David. Yeah, it was a very big night, particularly for Jeb Bush. It wasn't a make or break night. It was more about a break night for him. People were thinking that possibly his poor performance in uh, New Hampshire would lead to him sort of starting the exit from this campaign. But it looks like it was the opposite. He did very well here. And it was Marco Rubio that had a very difficult night. Let's go ahead and take a look at those numbers with 68% of the vote in. Jeb squeezing out 11% of the vote here. Marco at 10%, about 1,500 votes right now separate between these two. It all had to do with New Hampshire for Jeb Bush. He really made a stand here in New Hampshire because he knew it was important. He spent 54 days here compared to Marco, who just did 30. And the fact the guy who came in second here, Kasich, actually did 72 days here. So they each put in their time here to get where they, were, where they are tonight. In fact, by the time we got to today, Jeb didn't even really go out there and start trying to get some more votes. He basically said he was going to pray and wait for tonight. Now, we knew that Trump was going to be the runaway winner tonight, at least according to all the polls. But when we were speaking to people out there, a lot of what we heard was this is between two governors. They were trying to make a decision on which governor they were going to pick. In the end, a lot of them did pick Kasich, but there was a few people there that thought Bush was the right person. Tonight, he sounded energized when he came out. In fact, he said that uh, this campaign is not dead. We're going on to South Carolina. We need a president with a steady hand, with a proven record, who has a servant's heart, who doesn't believe it's all about him. That's why I'm running for the presidency of the United States and why I'm so grateful for the people of New Hampshire. You've given me the chance now to go to South Carolina, where we are going to do really well, thanks to you all. God bless you all. Thank you very much. The big surprise, though, tonight really being Marco Rubio coming in that fifth spot. A week ago, he was in third in Iowa. He came out of that a rock star. Everyone thought he was going to do really well in New Hampshire. And then the debate happened Saturday night. He got called out by Chris Christie. He had a canned answer that kept coming out and out and over and over again. And that just continued to snowball into today. By today, he was walking around and had people dressed like robots making fun of him. And that certainly didn't help. Tonight, he comes out here and he makes an admission that he messed up. But I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. Our disappointment tonight is not on you. It's on me. It's on me. I did not, I did not do well on Saturday night, so listen to this. That will never happen again. You might think it's frivolous to think that a debate is a big deal, but all the exit polls said it mattered because 46% of the people who voted today uh, didn't know who they were going to vote for in the last few days. They made that decision. In fact, 20% of the people who voted today made their decision today. So the debate likely influenced a lot of those people. Now the big question is, is whether him coming out on stage tonight, admitting he made a mistake, will make a difference, whether he can move past it in South Carolina. He's going to start up tomorrow. In fact, he's headed over there to start with some campaign there, and then he'll be actually headed over to Washington, D.C. for another stop there. So, again, New Hampshire looks like uh, it was good for both Jeb and Marco. They're still in this, but it wasn't a really deciding factor on what's going to happen with their campaigns. We're live in Manchester, New Hampshire. David Setta, CBS 4 News. All right, David, thank you very much.